Now, seeing as we finished with the paintbrush tool now, let's just go ahead and hit V again to give us our move tool. And what we'll do now is add a whole new dimension to this clip by basically dropping in a large format, maybe plasma TV screen that sits up here on this building. Now, obviously that involves things like maybe shadowing over here, good distortion of the image and everything. Let's find a couple of very easy ways to do that. First thing to do is open up the image we're going to actually be using. So once again, bring up the Photoshop browser. And if you scroll through all of the images, we were working obviously down here on the skyscrapers. If you come on up, you'll see a file called gianttvscreen.tiff. I want you to double click to open that and just close the file browser down again. Let's just pull this over a little bit so we can see what's going on. You can see that it's just a flattened image at this point that shows us the black outside area of the TV screen, maybe the manufacturer's name here in the middle, and obviously this is the image area. Now we want to make it look not so much like a poster, but more like a TV image. But usually when it's broadcast on the side of a building so big, it means big fat scan lines all the way across the image. Well, that's also very easy to do inside of Photoshop as well. What we're going to do first is create ourselves a new layer down here in the Layers palette. So just click once on the New Layer icon and then come up to the Marquee tool and make a selection of the area between the guides. Your cursor will snap into place. That just gives us the exact area that the image takes up. And then what we can do is use exactly the same shortcut we did a minute ago on the Layer Mask to fill this selected area with the background color, which in this case is now white. Simply hold down Control or Command on the Mac and hit Backspace or Delete to fill that area. Now keep it selected, no harm in doing so. Let's come up to the filter menu now, come down the list to the sketch options, and then go across and choose halftone pattern. Now it'll take a few seconds for it to load up because this now brings up the brand new filter gallery, obviously in Photoshop CS, and we can see that it's laying over a dot halftone pattern in the background. Now the filter's rendering in black, the background is obviously white, if you find that you can't see anything in here, chances are you filled the layer with black. Now you do need something on the layer in order for the filter to work. It will warn you, it can't be transparent. What we want to do is make a couple of changes over here. Currently the pattern type is set to dot. Obviously we're not aiming for a printed image here. So if we click and look on the options, I have a line option. And this obviously generates horizontal scan lines, which would be absolutely perfect. Now you can increase or decrease the size, it's up to you. Obviously, how much you distort the image to put it on the side of the building may make these lines disappear or start to become jagged. So you may find that you have to apply a slightly larger line in order to be able to see it at the end. It's up to you. I'm just going to make it round about that size. And then the contrast obviously won't really affect too much. It will slightly feather the edges or make them a little bit sharper towards the right hand side. But because there's no image in here right now, it's really not an issue at this point. So choose something that you like. Go ahead and click OK. And obviously those scan lines are now applied to that layer. How do we make that appear through the image below? Well, very simply, let's come over to the layer blending modes here where it says normal in the layers palette. And let's go ahead and try overlay. Okay, and you'll see that that just simply blends the darker and the lighter pixels together. Gives us quite a nice scan line effect on our image. 